Hello, this is Math 12550 Exam 3 Review, and I'm Dr. Tatiana Kodorovsky, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing verifying trigonometric identities. So for this video, I'm going to do number 53 on the review, and we are asked to verify the following trig identity. Whenever we're asked to verify something, we almost must be very careful with what we actually write down. We cannot use what we're trying to verify to show that this is true. So here, we're asked to verify the following identity. 1 over 1 plus cosine of x minus 1 over 1 minus cosine of x equals to negative 2 cotangent of x times cosecant. Okay, so we need to verify this trig identity. And whenever we need to verify a trig identity, we always start on one side and we work our way to the other side. So you know, every single equals in your sequence of equations should be either because of algebra or because of some trig identity. So what trig identities we can use is the Pythagorean trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared x equals 1, and we can use any of the quotient identities. So we're going to start with one side, and there's no unique way of doing this. There's many, many different ways of, that you can verify a trigonometric identity. What we want to do is verify that this equation is true. We want to verify that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So we're going to start with one side, and we're going to use algebra or known trigonometric identities to get to the other side. And which side you start with also does not matter. Usually it's preferable to start with a harder side. So in this case, I have two rational expressions with trig functions in them. They have different denominators and I want to multiply and I want to rewrite them so that they're over the same denominator. And so one kind of observation that I can make, and this is pure algebra, um, is that 1 minus cosine squared x equals to 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. This is simply because 1 minus y squared equals 1 plus y and 1 minus y. This has nothing to do with trigonometry. This is just algebra. And so I'm going to put them over the same denominator. So I'm going to put the first fraction over the denominator 1 minus cosine squared x. And to do that, I need to multiply the numerator and denominator of the first one by 1 minus cosine of x minus the second rational expression is also going to be over 1 minus cosine squared of x and so to do that I need to multiply the second rational expression by 1 plus cosine of x and so again every single equal sign must be because of either algebra or a trig identity this equal sign is because of algebra. Next, I'm going to again use algebra and I'm going to combine them. Now they have the same denominator. Nothing is stopping me from combining them. 1 minus cosine squared x. And so on top I have 1 minus cosine of x minus 1 plus cosine of x. Again, a word of caution here. Whenever you have a minus in front of a fraction and you want to distribute that minus to the numerator, it's best to do this in two steps so that you don't make any mistakes with signs. So I have 1 minus cosine of x minus 1 minus cosine of x. All I did here was just distribute the minus sign. Now I have a couple of cancellations. The 1 is going to cancel the minus 1. And what I have is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And on top, I just have negative 2 
cosine of x. So now I'm beginning to be a little bit hopeful because I have a negative 2 on the right-hand side of where I want to get. But now I have only cosines, and I need to get some expressions with cotangents and cosecants. So now I'm going to use a trig identity, 1 minus cosine squared x from this identity is also the same as sine squared x. So here, I'm actually now going to use a trig identity. This is going to be minus 2 cosine x divided by sine squared x. I'm almost there. What I need to do is I need to divide, separate these two. I'm going to separate this as negative cosine of x over sine of x times 1 over sine of x. Again, this is nothing but algebra. And finally, I get to my answer that this is negative 2 cotangent of x because cotangent is cosine over sine and this is cosecant over x. So I finally got to, to where I wanted to. So the trig identities that I used, I used some trig identities in the last step. I used the fact that cotangent of x was cosine over sine, and I used that cosecant of x is sine 1 over sine of x. So these are the trigonometric identities, and this is just algebra. And so every single equal sign that you write when you verify a trigonometric identity, the, the reason has to be behind it, either algebra or you're using a trig identity. Let's look at the first equal sign. All we did was, um, in the first two steps, all we did was we were finding a common denominator. So this step is because of algebra. And the second equal sign is because of algebra. Again, the third equal sign, we're simply distributing a negative. This is, again, all algebra. The fourth equal sign, we're doing, uh, we're just canceling the 1 and the minus 1, and we're combining the two cosines. So again, the reason is algebra. In this step, the reason why this equa equation is true is because of trigonometry. We use an actual trig identity to get to this equal sign. We rewrote 1 minus cosine x squared as sine x squared. The next step is nothing but algebra. We just separated a product of two things uh, as those two things. And finally, the, the last equal sign was because of trigonometry. We used the quotient trig identity to rewrite cosine of x or sine of x as cotangent of x. And we used a reciprocal trig identity to rewrite 1 over sine of x as cosecant of x. So every single equation that you write when you're verifying a trig identity has to be either because of algebra or because of a, of a, tr of a basic trig identity, like the Pythagorean one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, or a reciprocal or a quotient identity.